We are delighted to welcome professional equities trader and president of Trader Insight, Dr. Adrian Manz. In this session, Adrian will discuss statistical gap fades, low dollar stock reversals, and range reaction trading, and will show you how to stay how staying laser focused on these types of trades can have the day wrapped up by the time most people have their first cup of coffee and drive to work. Adrian, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, it's great being here. Thanks, Chantal. Of course. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, I am still in sunny Florida. I know a couple of you guys just finished up the boot camp down here that we did and, and are logging back in to catch some of the information again. For those of you who are seeing this for the first time or who are catching this for the first time, I am uh, Adrian Manns. I'm a full-time professional equities trader. I trade with uh, my lovely wife, Julie. That's us down on uh, on the floor of the exchange. We have been full-time professional traders trading primarily NYSE-listed stocks since uh, 1998, if you can believe that. And everything that we do is pattern-based, and we use patterns to time entries and exits from the market. There's no exception here. What I'm going to show you today is something that you can set up and actually use go and start trading tomorrow it's not um, you know it's not some proprietary thing it's it's all about just recognizing what's going on in the market and then learning how to react to what what it is that's happening so we've been trading our core methodology uh, since 1999 that's those pattern based trades that uh, that we do sort of on a, a longer time frame over the course of the session you know we open the trades at the beginning of the day we close them out at the end of the day and that was the focus of our trading for a long time. For a long time, we only did NYSE stuff. We only traded things that uh, we could automate and leave just sort of uh, hanging over the course of the day. And a few years ago, we decided that there was enough similarity now between NASDAQ and NYSE when it came to the electronic order routing that it was worth having a look and doing some, uh, some trades that covered sort of both grounds. So what we're going to look at today is a statistical gap fade and then some opening trades that we do in the NASDAQ. I'm going to use um, some of the higher dollar stocks since those have been the ones that have been popping over the last few days but I'll tell you that uh, it works equally well on the low dollar stocks. We have sort of both things set up. Um, we have guys who follow us in a trading room and take a look at what we're doing every day and some guys prefer to trade the high dollar stuff because you know it really tends to move and it moves fast and that's sort of our focus when we look at it. Other guys like trading things where you know you control a uh, uh, you can control a thousand shares with a with a five thousand uh, dollar you know investment out of your account. I mean you're going four to one or whatever, so it's like twenty thousand dollars that's uh, that's actually controlling it. But uh, people like those low dollar stocks when they're moving too. But they are all stocks that are trading NYSE and Nasdaq. No penny stocks. No um, no options. No futures. Everybody, you know, there's a real tendency. People want to know, you know, do you trade any of this other stuff? And the answer is no. So we really focus on what we've been focused on for a long time, and that's high quality stocks that are on the move. So Nasdaq strategy, we're going to focus on the opening bell, and the NYSE strategy or the S&P 500 strategy that I'm going to show you is focused on the first uh, half hour or so. So all these trades, everything we talk about today wraps up generally speaking within the first 30 to 60 minutes of trading. Now there's benefits and drawbacks to trade in the first hour, all right? And you know, I'm not going to tell you that it's it's not a challenge, um, but you know, the fast markets right around the opening bell can really translate into fast profits. There's very high liquidity on the stocks that we're looking at. You get very fast fills. I'm going to show you an example from uh, Apple. Apple's a stock that I trade a lot of times right off the open. Um, provides for very tight spreads, very easy control of the trade. I pre-plan every one of my trades. So what we're going to look at is something that might resonate with people who sort of like to shoot from the hip and what you need to know is that's not at all what we're doing. So when I take a trade, my trades are always all about I have to know exactly what I'm going to do before I'm going to do it and in that way I've got like all the confidence and conviction of, of uh, you know getting in letting the trade take care of itself I bracket everything up I put the order out to the market and then I don't second guess what I'm doing I know what my reward to risk ratio is gonna be I know where I'm getting in I know where I'm getting out for a, for a profit I know where I'm getting out for a loss and we just go with it then so the fact that you're able to pre-plan everything and the fact that so much of this can be done with your trading software really makes 
this kind of a trading system around the open pretty nice. And I think you're going to see what I'm talking about here. I use, uh, use a software platform called Realtek. I use a broker who's, uh, you know, you, you got to get in there and take a look at the broker 606 statement, find out, you know, how much of the liquidity are they, uh, are they sending out to the market? How much of it is, it's called directed orders. Directed orders mean you're getting filled in the market. If you pull up the 606 and find out that, uh, you know, 90% of the trades are getting filled uh, locally by the broker, then you're going to have a little bit more difficulty in getting these things executed and getting profitable when you're doing them. So you want to make sure you're in touch with your software. You want to make sure you're in touch with your broker. You want to make sure you know exactly what's going to happen, you know, before you make these trades. So that's sort of the caveat with the whole thing. Drawbacks are going to be, you know, fast market action. Um, you know, if you've got a broker dealer who is reporting to you that uh, you know they're doing 80, 80 or 90 percent of the trades are filled on their own book fast markets you're gonna have trouble putting in the limit orders that I'm talking about and getting filled um, you know that high liquidity across uh, around the opening bell can also translate into some pretty extreme volatility so what you want to make sure about here as I'm talking about these drawbacks is that you can sort of frame this in relation to the software that you're using can you get your software to react to what's going on in terms of liquidity in the market in a way that's fast enough that it's going to get you in and out at the levels that you want to get in and out at? And is your broker actually routing your orders out to the market if you tell them to? It's okay if some of those orders over the course of the session, you know, during a slower part of the day are filled on the, uh, on the broker's book if you're using like smart routing or something. But around an open, around a close, you really want to make sure you've got directed orders out. Discretionary trading, you know, this is going to be my biggest, um, my biggest admonition to anybody who's trading is you really don't want to have a whole lot of discretion, especially around the opening bell about what you're going to do. You want to be able to plan these trades and then you want to be able to trade that plan. So you want to be able to set these things out there, no confusion, no anxiety. You set up the trades, you let it go. You're not even looking at the P&L. You just want to make sure you get filled where you're supposed to get filled and stay away from bargain software got to make sure that the software that you're using is high-end stuff that you can really pre-program a bunch of levels and count on the uh, software taking advantage of the liquidity around the open. As long as you keep all this stuff in mind and you focus on the discipline, I think you're going to be pretty happy with what we're going to talk about. So the first hour trades I'm going to talk about today, the first one is going to be something that in, uh, in one of my books I call the Baltimore Chop, and that's an opening gap reversal, a statistical gap fade. And that is a bread and butter trade for a bunch of the guys who trade with us, for a bunch of guys who've been to the boot camp, for you know, people who've read the books, people who follow um, these webinars and things and follow what I'm doing. I know everybody loves the opening gap, so we're going to talk about the best way to trade an opening gap. And then I'm also going to show you something that I call uh, volatility uh, channel band trades. So you've got these uh, volatility bands that occur over the course of a session. They're very easy to spot. You spot them today for tomorrow, and then in tomorrow's trading, you just take advantage of those ranges off the opening bell, and you can really manage to rack up some pretty decent profitability doing this. So that one in particular, you know, I'm just going to show you the, the opening gap trades. We haven't had a few in a few days. Um, I'm actually just back from... Uh, uh, another little side trip talking to a government about uh, managing some money so I didn't have any opening gaps that I could record for you over the last couple days but uh, I'm gonna show you how to find them today we just didn't have any at all nothing uh, nothing gapped and held but I'm gonna show you some trades that uh, that will really make some sense and then you can start looking for these uh, tomorrow so let's talk about the gap reversals first because I know that's everybody's like favorite thing in the world is uh, going out there looking for gaps, figuring out if they're uh, likely to reverse, right, or likely to continue. But uh, this is going to be a gap and reverse kind of a strategy. So, you know, really a lot of HFT trading, a lot of what's going on out there is based on some pretty basic statistical concepts. You think they're these giant algorithms, um, but a, stati a statistical concept can be simple and still be good. Right, my whole thing here is based on a two standard deviation move in volatility, and then we're looking for a price reversion. I'm going to talk to you about the rules for this in a second, but uh, you know, when when you get something that happens with price or volatility, and it's very very different from what typically happens from with price and volatility, 
what tends to happen right after that is a mean reversion. And standard deviation is a super simple statistic, very, very easy to calculate, included in most brokerage software. If it's not included in your software, you know, you can just export uh, usually with a DDE to Excel and have a watch list and the, the, you know, Excel does a beautiful job of calculating these. I'm going to show you what the calculation is in a second so you can really just take these and get going with them almost immediately probably. Um, but when you see a two standard deviation move in whatever phenomenon is that you're looking at, um, what's most likely to happen right after that is a reversion to the mean. And that reversion to the mean, depending on how, how many standard deviations out you are, can go from being in the 60% probability range to the 95% probability range, and the 95% probability range is what we are looking at. We want to be in the 95% confidence interval when we set up these trades. Now, what am I using as a volatility measure should be the question that's on your mind. Right? Am I using the implied volatility of the front month contract? Am I using uh, historical volatility? Well, when you're talking about opening gaps, what you're really talking about is range, and mostly what you're focused on is true range, because true range includes gaps. Your software should be calculating all this for you. A stock's range today, right? everybody's familiar with this, it's the high minus the low. So you get a high price, subtract the low price, if the price was $50.10 at the high and $49.40 at the low, you had a range of $0.70, cents, right? So everybody, everybody understands what range is. True range is just going to be the greater value of that high minus low, so it could be the range, or the absolute high minus the previous close or the absolute low minus the previous uh, closing price. And all that means is true range is going to give you the greater value of either today's range or if there was a gap it's going to include the gap from yesterday's close into today's range right in today's low so that's that's going to be the thing that you're looking for that should be included in your software it's usually called true range or it's called um, it could be called average true range if it's average true range you need to go and just sort of find the true range value uh, for these calculations that we're going to do but uh, it's also very easy to program in Excel, and if, if your software doesn't have it, just send me an email, uh, adrian at traderinsight.com. I'm happy to send you the formula for uh, true range, and you can just get your, uh, uh, your data exchange to go and start calculating this out for you. But basically what it tells you as a volatility measure, if the high price was $50.10 and the close yesterday was $49, bucks, dollar and ten cents is going to be the true range for the day. That's what we're interested in because you've got some assumptions when you're talking statistics. First off, normal distribution. We know that volatility is typically normally distributed. True range is a proxy for volatility. On this one, you've just got to go and satisfy yourself. You know, Do some reading and take a look at what true range really measures, and then you figure out that the phenomenon we're interested in, opening gaps, is really the thing that it's always best in statistics to look at the actual phenomenon rather than uh, um, going and trying to dig around too much, right, and, and figuring out what else could be it. But true range is a good proxy for volatility when it comes to opening gaps, since true range includes gaps in its calculation. And then finally, the assumption that volatility is mean reverting. I've done a bunch of work on this over the years. Uh, you know, a bunch of other guys, you know, Larry Connors has done a, done a bunch of articles uh, on volatility being mean reverting. A bunch of people have proven this empirically. And what it gives you is access to this thing, which is the standard normal distribution. And if you look on either side of the center there, either side of the, of the mean, you see 34.1%. Those two things together, one standard deviation out on either side, account for 68.2% of the volatility that you can expect to see. Right, go out another two tail, another uh, uh, portion of the bell curve there, 13.6 on e either side. Now you're in the 95% area of the uh, probability distribution, and once when you when, <laughs> once you get out that far, what you get is access to mean reversion. Right, this assumption of mean reversion, where you have the arithmetic re mean running through your data in the middle and you've got these red balloons that are high volatility and after you get the high volatility which in our case would be the gap open mean reversion in these blue balloons says price is coming back down towards that line and that's where we are looking to make our money 
So you just tell your software to grab every single day's true range for 10 days. This is how I calculate this. We got the true range for days 1 through 10, and then we plug it into this formula, right? Everything gets plugged in here. So the first thing we do is run each one of those values into the standard deviation calculation, right? So it's going to be day 1, day 2, day 3, minus the average, right? That's the average of those 10. And then we square it and divide it by 10. And then we take the square root to get rid of the square. And what that gives us is the standard deviation value. So in this case, it's 49 cents. That's one standard deviation. If we added 49 cents to 125, that would be a, a one standard deviation move on a gap open. If we want to do two standard deviations, we just multiply 49 cents times two. That's 98 cents, right? That tells us we had 98 cents to a buck and a quarter, and now we know how much of a gap we're going to look for the following day. So we just tell our spreadsheet or our trading software to go and sort those to the top, tell us when we have a gap. If bulls or bears gap that stock open, two standard deviations above the high or below the low of yesterday's range then we're going to look to enter just above the high or below the low of the deepest bar in the gap move. And by that I just mean we're going to treat this like a pullback, right? So let's say these are five minute bars. On the five minute bars, right, yesterday's close to today's open, we get a two standard deviation gap down below the low of the, of the uh, previous session. Now the next bar moves lower, the next bar moves lower, and then finally that bar there in the circle, that's the lowest bar, the lowest high that we make on the way down. And what we're going to look to do is enter just above that high in the next five minute bar and we're going to target the open of the first bar. This is how simple this really is to carry out. And I'm only going to do these trades if they happen in the first half an hour. right? So after the first half hour I'm not even looking for these signals anymore. This is what it looks like plotted in TradeStation. Um, this is an indicator. I can't sell it to you. This is uh, something we give to our boot camp guys, but you know you can look at this and sort of figure out what it's doing. It's just calculating those two SD gaps. Not that hard to program yourself if you're an easy language guy. It's going to go and sort it up to the top. If it's a, uh, uh, a gap higher or a gap lower, it's going to give you whether it's a long or a short, right? The greens are longs, the, blue, the reds are shorts in this case, and you're good to go. You just go and start flipping through charts, and you can figure out whether or not you're going to be taking a long trade or a short trade, and then you can figure out which ones of these are really good gaps, you know, and which ones are sort of bad data or whatever. But this is what it looks like when you're going to go and calculate these gaps, right? So we've got this one was in TripAdvisor. He had a two standard deviation open. Right, everybody should be able to see that. I mean, you can almost eyeball that and see it's two standard deviation move. But the important thing to notice is, right, we didn't trigger in the first bar here. We triggered in the deepest bar, of the pullback. Right, that's the one that gave us what our entry criteria was going to be. We're going to get long above the high of the deepest bar in the pullback. Right, so it's just about at the low of the first bar. And then our first target is going to be open at the first bar. And that's how simple it is. And then all you need to do is sit down and before you put the trade on, calculate, all right, is my reward to risk ratio acceptable? So is it, you know, in my case, I'm usually looking for about one and a half to one on these, but, uh, you know, you might go, uh, say, two to one, or you might be somebody who wants to get more aggressive and say, you know, it's got to be at least a one to one reward to risk based on where I'm putting my stop. And I'll show you that too, right? So we're going to enter the long position above the high of that second bar. Right, so that third bar is where we're getting in, right above the uh, the high of the second bar. That was our target. Look at that. We went right up to the target, bumped around, and started moving down. And if it would have gone against us, the stop loss on the position would have just been the close of that of that second bar of trading, or just below the close of that second bar of trading. So we're not looking for this thing to fade too much on us. If they don't go in our direction right away, you know, typically seventy dollar stock like this. I'm not looking for more than a, a you know about a 30 30 cent uh, stop out if it's if it doesn't go in my direction. So if they don't go in your direction right away, then you know it's usually a good indication that it's it's time to pull the plug. So you're not generally going to risk a whole lot on these. This is how I set up these orders. Now this is in real tech. So the first thing we looked at was TradeStation. TradeStation was where uh, you know this thing's just that sort of spewing out the. Uh, 
two SD gaps. Um, I've just been using it for a long time, so I, I you know, keep them there. But you can also do it in Realtek. You can do it in just about any good good piece of software. Um, I don't endorse any software. Just get something you're comfortable with. Make sure it's giving you direct access to the markets, and make sure that you have got the ability to to direct your orders. That's that's really the the uh, so the nuts and bolts of picking what's going to work for you. Um, we see here I've got a stop limit price right of seventy two forty. So that's the way this is going to work is the stop price going to be seventy two dollars and forty cents. That's the activation price. That's where I'm looking to get long. The limit price then is going to be seventy two forty three. That's the worst slip that I'm willing to accept on this trade. It's about three cents. And then I just go in and put in the rest of the parameters, right? We know 73.69 was where we wanted to uh, hit it for a profit. We know that 72.09 was where there was going to be a stop loss. We just make sure that all those parameters then are giving us at least one and a half to one. In this case, they definitely are uh, reward to risk. And then, you know, I've got it saved as a strategy called opening gap. And, uh, you know, it just very quickly allows me to fill in these formulas. I hit place order, and boom, you know, you're off to the races. You've got your, your orders live with the exchange. You can also, uh, some people like to take profits off uh, right away. So, you know, you can add a second leg to this thing. So you're still getting in based on a stop limit order. Um, you still got your stop loss exactly in the same place. In this case, what's different is you're taking some profits off um, at two different places, right? So your, your first profit is going to come off at uh, 72.99 in this case. And your next profit is going to be that 73.69 target. So if you like taking profits on the way, you can do it that way. Especially if you're trading larger order size, I would just say you know if you're paying a, a fixed commission, if you're paying you know five bucks a side or nine bucks a side or something, then you have to be careful about setting orders up this way. If you're paying per share, then you don't care, right? Because you're going to pay for every share you trade, you're going to pay something a penny or whatever. Um, so it's going to be the same price even if you split it into ten orders. But in the case of uh, you know, my trading, if anything, I'm taking off uh, half um, at some point between myself and the profit target. Usually what I do is I let the whole thing go uh, for the whole trade. As far as money management goes, you know, my big thing is I want to get the trade to risk-free as soon as I possibly can. So when I get 50% of the distance from the entry to the target, I trail the stop at break-even. If it moves strongly in my favor, I wait for that profit target to be achieved and then I'll take off a portion of the position and I'll trail the balance behind. So I'll put it down at 50% to the target. And then progressively, as something starts moving in my favor, I tighten that stop up. So I'll put the trailing stop in a real tick and I'll, I'll use the, the uh, trailing stop server to get, uh, you know, maybe a, a 10 cent or a 15 cent stop that just keeps ratcheting up behind it. Eventually, it's going to take me out. I don't care. I want to protect my profits. And again, when you set your targets for those gaps, if it's a gap to the downside, Use the high or the open of the first bar of trading as your target. If you are gapping up, you're going to use the low or the open of the opening bar, right? Because now you're going to be short in the trade. And you can also use pivot lines and fib retracements. Those are all good initial targets, too. Here's some alternate targets we can talk about real quick. Um, you know, in this one, we see that the entry was above the very first bar, right? The first bar was the deepest bar in the gap. Well, now where are you going to put your profit target? Well, if you have pivot lines drawn on your charts, right, then it becomes very, very easy to say, all right, a logical place for price to go in reverse is going to be to one of those floor trader pivots. So in this case, you're just targeting up to S2, and uh, you know, you're probably going to put your stop loss is going to be right before the open, or right before the close, rather, of that first bar of trading. So you just got to use your head when you're putting these trades together, right? It's in here's another example, right? In this case, you've got a Fibonacci retracement that you can use as a target because that first bar made a really wide move, and now you're looking at a gigantic move to the downside if you're going to target a pivot. Well, if that doesn't work, go to your tools, pull out the first tool that you can find that makes sense, and that's going to be the Fib tool. Now you got an entry. In this case, we're entering below the close of the first bar of trading. That's an alternate entry and we just target a FIB expansion. So I'm just going into that first bar, I'm doing my FIB line based on the range of the first bar. I'm getting out at the, uh, you know, at that 382 line. Of course you could get out at the 618 and that's a better trade, but you didn't know it was going to go there when it started bouncing on that 382. I tend to keep these things pretty tight and I would be looking to take off at least half at that line. So those are the uh, opening gaps. Now let's talk about the range scalps. 
So the range scalps are, what you could do here is you're focusing on what happened today is going to be the best predictor of what happens tomorrow. So you're going to go through, look for the places that sort of constrain trading over the course of the session, and then bet that tomorrow, same thing's going to happen. So you want to be able to look at a chart, an intraday chart. I use five-minute charts for this kind of stuff. You want to find clear support and resistance, and then make sure that the stock you're looking at has swings of about 20 cents. And if you're trading these, you want to make sure they've got 75 cents to a buck on a typical day in terms of the range. And if you want to trade these right on the opening bell, you need to focus on candidates that have you know more than 10 million shares traded per day. So that really cuts down the uh, the group of stocks, especially you know when you're looking at these Nasdaq things. That's going to get you into some of the real big uh, the big names, the Apples of the world, the Oracles, um, Baba, uh, Gilead. I trade a lot of triple Qs, diamond spiders, all that kind of stuff with this as well. Um, and then you can also use it on your lower value stocks. So a lot of what we do in the in the war room, uh, you know, Rick's in there, and you know, he's calling a lot of stuff that does these opening reversals uh, back into the ranges off of you know five and ten dollar stocks. But in the case of something like that, what you don't want to do is trade it right off the opening bell. Those low dollar stocks tends to be the case that the spreads are too wide. Uh, you know, hard to get fills right off the opening bell that makes sense in terms of profitability. If you want to trade the very first tick of the day, what you want to make sure of is that the spread on the stock you're trading is only going to be about a penny. And in most cases, that's going to limit you then to stocks that are trading 10, 15, 20 million shares a day. So here's an example, right? Apple. I'm just going to show you this because I want to go back over. Um, Historically, just show you how a big name stock can become just part of what you do every single day. So, Apple, I've got three areas based on my trading plan that I'm interested in hitting this thing for an entry. And what I do is I put my first one as my primary. So, that's just 109.05 down to 108.84. That's based on that day's trading. Then I've got an alternate entry, an alternate second entry. And as you can see, each one of those represents a band of trading that happened during the previous session. So what I do is I just go through and I'm looking, I want to draw support and resistance based lines, I want to look at volume, make sure that uh, the swings are identifiable, right, that we've got really easy places on a chart to say here's where something happened. If that's the case, the next day you will very frequently see this kind of a thing. So I just look at the pre-market data. I make sure that the stock is trading around one of those bands. If I've got a short sale set up at 108.60 down to 108.27, uh, all I'm doing is saying, all right, I'm trading here pre-market. This is the most likely place it's going to go. Boom, I'm in right at the opening bell, and I'm out 10 minutes later. And if you don't think it happens frequently, I will show you what happened today. Later in the session, if you want to follow these, you know, it's, it's like you're looking for that same kind of a thing where it pokes up above the line and then comes back down through. Those work equally well. It's just, you know, I find it's hard to stay focused on this kind of a thing. It's, it's fast-paced over the course of the session. What I prefer to do is my planned trades later and my uh, discretionary trades very early in the day when I'm still fresh and, uh, I don't know, you know, able to make better decisions. We actually live in Pacific Palisades, which is out on, uh, on the coast out by Los Angeles. And it's a 6.30 a.m. market open, and... Uh, you know that's definitely a limitation of trading from there. It, it's um, it's hard to stay frosty. You know it's hard to it's hard to really uh, be on your toes when you start working that early and and uh, stay focused on scalp. So this makes it easy for me to do these things right out of the gate. All right here's another one. Apple on the long side. Right. So it's going to be the same thing. You identify where the ranges of volatility were the previous session, and what do you do with it? You go in. Look at that. It opened below the 109.48 line all the way up to the 109.97 line and then kept going and hit a pivot. So these happen with extreme regularity. Here's BABA, right, same thing. Identify the ranges that it traded in the previous session. Snap tight on those ranges. Some of these things move more than your apples do, right? So your apple is not going to get the, the range that some of these more volatile stocks are. So there's really uh, the room for a scalp setup like this to be a lot wider than uh, some of the typical examples I'm, I'm showing you. So if you're into the high flyers, you know, you're going to get moves like this on them or, you know, a scalp trade is 52 cents. Most people would not call that a scalp, but I do. Right, and here you see, you know, the stock stock opened 
and traded between those ranges um, you know pretty much during the first half hour of trading and then reversed and went higher but I don't care because these strategies are focused on getting me into the opportunities right around the opening bell so if you've seen this service you know Comcast's on there a lot too right I trade these in the room um, every day so we're going over these things constantly you know and talking to these guys about how to get in and out of them and um, you know the strategies I'm showing you today are, are just two of the first hour strategies that I trade but I find they're really the ones that people like the best right so sorry about that here we go here's you know another one this is Comcast and here you see it right so that plan that I just had up on the screen for you again translates into I'm gonna look at the stock pre-market I'm gonna see where it's trading is it trading below one of my volatility lines if it is and it's traveling in the same direction as yesterday's bias was pointing me then I'm gonna say alright if it goes and hits that line I want you to get me into the trade I'm gonna get out at the next line and you know when it goes flying up and passes right by me if, if my trailing stop winds up taking me out of the trade and I miss a buck on the on the on the extension I don't care what's important to me is I followed my plan I did what was easy to execute and I was able to profit from it and then you can also go through and trace these lines back you know over the course of a few days which was what I did today so this morning in Apple right this was pretty much a no-brainer you, you pulled you pulled anywhere from three to six hundred dollars out of the market in the first fifteen to twenty minutes and what you see here is we've got the, the solid lines were based on yesterday's range and when I saw that Apple was gonna open high this morning I went I compressed my chart a little bit and I went back and I looked at all right where were those ranges that Apple was trading in a few days ago so it's valid to go back five or six days if, if the stocks gonna gap open because there's still you gotta think of this as a uh, you know where are the bodies buried kind of a thing where where did people trigger their trades a few days ago where people get long where people get short and then how likely is it that it's going to happen again today? So I find right around the open, right around the close, those are the two times of the day that this kind of position management really winds up making a bunch of sense. And you know, if you uh, if you want to trade them in the middle of the session, like I said, the key there is just make sure that you're keying off of a reversal. So in this case, if you're looking to get long and the stocks trading up above those lines what you want to make sure of is that it comes back down below the lines and then punches up through one of them the more violent the move up through the line is the better it's going to be for you trust me right you just want to make sure you're capturing volatility when it's happening and not just capturing sort of a drift where it uh, you know goes up and just touches the line and, and winds up reversing on you so if you try in these trades um, you know the best thing that I can tell you is as far as um, implementing these right off the opening bell is if you have problems with them I mean you can you can send me a, a an email the first thing I want you to check though is how much of the order flow that you are sending your broker is going out as directed orders if um, if that number is is very low if it winds up being the case that most of what your broker is doing are non-directed orders you call your broker and you just say hey look I'm looking to scalp around the open I do not want to be a part of a non-directed order you know, can I change my commission structure from flat rate to uh, 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 per share basis so that I can make sure that you know what I'm sending out there is actually uh, um, is actually going to be what ha happens as opposed to I'm getting filled on an order book when it uh, uh, you know when it pops around on a market maker's book, which is which is not what you want. Definitely not what you want when you're doing this style of trading. Um, but that is uh, that is the gist of it. Those are my first hour trades. I thought I wasn't going to have enough time, and then I wound up getting a little fast here on this whole thing. I guess if you want, if you want to be in the war room, this was actually an offer for a for a different group that included. I know most of you guys are are uh, pretty advanced traders, and probably not really looking for a 101, 201 kind of a thing. But um, it's actually the same deal. So if there's uh, a stock trading 101 a stock trading 201 that talk about my trading plans and like how I put things together and how I uh, relate to the market and then um, it will give you a month of uh, of our first hour room live with that and you can find all that stuff at traderinsight.com forward slash first hyphen hour if you have any trouble with it send me an email and you know we'll send you a link or send an email to support at traderinsight.com 
And uh, if nothing else, you can be in there for a month and, and really get a feel for uh, what it is that, uh, you know, what it is we're doing with this first hour stuff and how it works. So, and now if I can figure out how to get out of this screen, I will take any questions anybody has. Hi, Adrian. It's Chantel. Hello. Oh, okay, great. Um, I do have a question here. Is your Metastock plugin a good tool for these setups? Uh, the Metastock plugin is going to be is going to be fine for these setups. Um, you'll need to after you or if you ordered the Metastocks uh, plugin already, you can send an email to Metastock and they will send you the uh, the opening gap scanner that goes with it. I'm not sure that it's already included, but they did program one and it does work. And uh, uh, Jeff Gibby at Metastock or uh, Dave Osman would uh, would be the ones to contact for that, and they'll they'll get you the opening gap uh, scanner. All right, and I have another question here. Is opening gap trade hide probability since it's counter trend? Um, yeah, as long as you follow as long as you follow the parameters that we put into the into the model. So that model, if you want to read more about it, you can go to like Active Trader Magazine's website, and and uh, there's a version of the article of an article that I wrote there for it. It talks about the the probability distributions. So if you're a statistician, you can. Uh, you can take a look at that, and it's really pretty impressive because what you're doing is you're getting out into the 95% confidence interval, and then you don't have you're not 95% confident that you're gonna that you're gonna win. What you're 95% confident of is that a mean reversion is gonna happen based on where price has gone so far, where volatility has taken price. If you're in the tail of the distribution like that. I can tell you for sure, you can be fairly well certain it's going to make a move back. It's going to fade back into it. What's important is that you use money management and get trailing stops in behind it. Because you're right, if what you're thinking is, well, you know, once, once you move back to, say, one standard deviation, is there, is there a high likelihood that it's going to reverse and keep going again? Yeah, it could happen. The, the distribution could shift, and then you start getting a move in the other direction. It's the initial gap and the initial uh, uh, depth of the gap that I was pointing out in this thing as the, the key to spotting the ones that are going to be profitable. All right, Adrian, thank you so much for joining us today.